When it comes to the biggest land hunters, modern predators like bears and big cats often steal the spotlight. But they're just the latest chapter in a much older, wilder story. Long before today's ecosystems took shape, Earth was home to mammalian predators that made modern apex hunters look small by comparison. These prehistoric giants weren't just bigger, they thrived in ecosystems vastly different from our own, hunting with raw power and unique adaptations that pushed the limits of predatory life on land. The title of largest terrestrial predatory mammal is not easily awarded. If we focus strictly on land-dwelling mammals that hunted with some regularity, the short-faced bear, Arctodus simus, which lived in North America until relatively recently, often tops the list. The largest males may have exceeded a ton in weight, but as an omnivore, it was not a dedicated predator. Slightly smaller contenders, such as Deodon Shoshonensis and Andrusarchus mongoliensis, each estimated at around 800 kilograms, 1,764 pounds, were more carnivorous in their habits, yet still fell short of being true hypercarnivores, predators whose diet consists almost entirely of meat. That distinction matters. Hypercarnivores rely almost exclusively on animal prey, which imposes evolutionary constraints on their size. Without access to a varied diet, reaching truly massive proportions becomes more difficult. Among the few land-dwelling mammalian hypercarnivores that approach this upper size limit, roughly 500 kilograms or 1,102 pounds, one species stands out for both its success and its mystery. Megistotherium osteothalastes, a giant member of the extinct hyenilorid hyenodonts. Throughout the Cenozoic, three primary groups of large terrestrial predators emerged in the northern hemisphere. The first were the Mesonychians, a diverse order that included Hapalodectids, Mesonychids, and other archaic forms often grouped under Triasodontids. These were eventually followed by the Carnivorans, the group that includes modern dogs, cats, bears, and their relatives. The third were the Hyenodonts, a now extinct lineage that encompasses several families, such as Hyenodontids, Hyenalorids, Provivorids, Prionogalids, and Teratodontids. Mesonychians, along with their lesser known relatives, the Oxyanids, dominated the predator guilds of Eurasia and North America from the early Paleocene through much of the Eocene. But by the close of the Eocene, climatic shifts led to their decline. In their place rose two dominant groups, the Nimravid carnivorans and the hyenodonts, particularly the hyenilorids, which would eventually produce some of the largest true land-based mammalian carnivores ever known. By the later Ligocene, hyenilorid hyenodonts had established themselves in Africa, a development that would prove advantageous. At the time, Africa was still an isolated landmass, and as global climates began to cool around the end of the Oligocene, hyenodont diversity plummeted elsewhere. Outside of Africa, most lineages, including the once successful hyenodontids, vanished alongside the Nimravids. But in Africa, hyenodonts persisted. This continental refuge became a stronghold for their continued evolution. During the early Miocene, around 23 to 22 million years ago, the group experienced a resurgence. Hyenailorids, along with other surviving families like the Prionogalids and the Teratodontids, diversified once more, filling a wide range of ecological roles. Their size varied dramatically, with small weasel-like forms such as Prionogale to enormous species, 
like Simba Kubwa, Hyenae Luros, and Megistotherium. Some, including Hyenae Luros, expanded their range into Eurasia. However, Megistotherium appears to have remained confined to Africa, though its fossils suggest a broad distribution, from modern-day Libya to Kenya, and possibly as far south as Namibia. One notable feature of Hyena Lawrence, including Megistotherium, is the disproportionate size of their skulls compared to their bodies. Their cranial remains are often far better preserved than the rest of the skeleton, leading to some early misinterpretations. In particular, initial estimates of Megistotherium's body size were based on comparisons with cats, which have relatively small skulls for their body mass. These reconstructions proposed a creature weighing up to three tons. However, more complete material from related species like Hyenailurus sulzeri and the Hyenodontid Hyenodon horridus revealed a consistent pattern. Hyenodonts had unusually large heads relative to their body size. When scaled more accurately, Megistotherium likely weighed around 500 kilograms or 1,102 pounds, still placing it among the largest known terrestrial mammalian hypercarnivores. The oversized skulls of hyenodonts were not an evolutionary accident. In species like Megistotherium, the jaws were the primary tools for capturing and killing prey. Unlike modern carnivores that use their forelimbs to pin or hold struggling prey, Hyenae lorids had limbs adapted primarily for locomotion. As a result, they relied entirely on their bite for subduing targets, necessitating powerful, heavily built skulls and jaw muscles. Their limbs were semi-digitigrade and built for bounding strides rather than sustained speed, similar in proportions to those of large cats. While capable of bursts of speed, they were not especially efficient runners. Still, like most terrestrial predators, they didn't need to be the fastest animals, just fast enough to reach their prey using a mix of stealth and short pursuit. Like carnivorans, hyenodonts originally evolved molars and premolars adapted for slicing meat. These teeth developed a self-sharpening mechanism that made them even more efficient at this task than those of their carnivoran counterparts. However, this high degree of specialization came at a cost. It limited the group's ecological flexibility. While carnivorans were able to branch out into omnivory and scavenging, hyenodonts remained largely restricted to hypercarnivory, specialists in meat consumption with little room for dietary variation. In Megistotherium, most of the molars and all of the premolars retained this original shearing function. However, some of the rearmost molars evolved differently. These became broader and more robust, adapted less for slicing and more for crushing. This suggests that Megistotherium was capable of processing bone to some extent, likely to extract marrow or break down carcasses more thoroughly. When we picture apex predators, we usually imagine smart, strategic killers, animals that stalk with stealth, make split-second decisions, and outthink their prey. But Megistotherium, one of the largest mammalian carnivores to ever walk the earth, likely played by a different set of rules. Its brain and senses weren't about finesse, they were about raw, overwhelming power. We don't have a preserved brain case for Megistotherium, but its close relative, like Hyenodon, offer some revealing clues. Studies of Hyenodon skulls show that Hyenodonts had relatively small brains for their size. Their encephalization quotient, or EQ, a rough measure of brain size compared to body mass, was far below that of modern predators like wolves or big cats. In fact, their EQ sits somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3, suggesting limited problem-solving abilities. And given Megistotherium's sheer size, its brain was probably even smaller in proportion. 
But don't mistake small brains for dull senses. In fact, Megislotherium likely had a very sharp nose. Its relatives had enlarged olfactory bulbs, hinting at a strong sense of smell, similar to what we see in today's scent-driven predators like dogs and bears. In the sprawling Miocene savannas of Africa, that kind of sensory range would have been critical for locating prey over long distances or zeroing in on a fresh carcass before the competition arrived. Its hearing was probably decent, but not exceptional. There's no sign of any specialized structures for fine-tuned auditory processing, but it could likely hear well enough to track movement or detect environmental cues, enough to get the job done. As for vision, Megistotherium may have been less impressive. The placement of its eyes suggests a wide field of view, but not much binocular overlap. That means it wasn't great at judging depth. Unlike modern ambush hunters that rely on laser-sharp vision to pounce, instead, this predator likely homed in on its targets using smell and sound, then closed the distance with brute force. So no, Megistotherium wasn't a cunning killer, but with its immense size, crushing jaws and well-tuned senses, it didn't need to be clever. It was built for dominance, and in its time, that was more than enough. Its size and powerful jaws indicate that Megistotherium preyed on some of the larger herbivores inhabiting Miocene Africa. Smaller proboscideans, such as early Gomphotheres and Prodinotherium, were likely among its preferred prey, particularly the juveniles of larger species. But its diet was almost certainly broader. Other herbivores, including the semi-aquatic Anthracothere libicosaurus, once mistaken for a reptile, and the early Climacocerids, long-lost relatives of giraffes, would also have been viable targets. Given that Megistotherium persisted for nearly 11 million years, from about 23 to 12 million years ago, the exact composition of its prey base would have changed substantially over time, following shifts in herbivore diversity and abundance. Though Megistotherium stood at the top of the food chain, it did not hold that position alone. It shared its environment with other large hyenolorids, including Simba Kubwa, a similarly massive predator that appeared early in the Miocene but disappeared relatively quickly. A more enduring rival was Hyenilorus, a somewhat smaller but highly successful species. Unlike Megistotherium, Hyenilorus expanded its range beyond Africa and into Eurasia, ultimately surviving slightly longer than its larger cousin. Beyond its own lineage, Megistotherium also faced competition from the Amphicyonids, a group of large carnivorans sometimes referred to as bear dogs. These predators filled ecological roles once occupied by Nimravids and had evolved into robust, ambush-orientated hunters by the Miocene. Two Amphicyonids in particular matched Megistotherium in size, Amphicyon ingens, which lived in North America between roughly 15.8 and 14 million years ago, and Amphicyon giganteus, which ranged across Eurasia and into Africa between 20 and 16 million years ago. The latter would have been a direct ecological competitor, possibly clashing with Megistotherium over territory and prey. Because Megistotherium lived millions of years ago and left behind only fossilized bones, much of its reproductive biology remains a mystery. However, by looking at modern large carnivorous mammals and its closest relatives, scientists can make some educated guesses. Like today's big predators, lions, bears, and hyenas, Megistotherium likely invested heavily in raising relatively few offspring. Large carnivores usually have slow reproductive rates because their young need extensive parental care to survive. This might have meant long pregnancies, delayed sexual maturity, and years of learning essential hunting skills from parents or the group. Social behavior in Megistotherium is uncertain. Some large predators hunt in packs or family groups, while others are solitary. 
given the immense size and power of Megistotherium, it might have been a lone hunter relying on brute strength rather than cooperative strategies. Alternatively, it could have shown some degree of social interaction, especially between mothers and their cubs. Life expectancy for a predator this size was probably moderate. While large mammals generally live longer than smaller ones, the harsh realities of a Miocene predator's world, competition, injuries, and fluctuating prey availability would have limited its lifespan. Reaching full size and reproductive maturity might have taken several years. Toward the end of the Middle Miocene, a shift in climate toward cooler and drier conditions began to reshape ecosystems. Herbivore populations declined or changed in composition, and the large-bodied predators that had depended on them began to suffer. Megistotherium eventually disappeared around 12 million years ago, shortly before Hyenilorus also vanished. The last of the truly massive amphicyanids soon followed. Although a few smaller amphicyanid species emerged in the aftermath, none proved long-lasting, and the group as a whole disappeared by the close of the Miocene. As for the remaining hyenodonts, smaller bodied forms did persist for a time, but even these could not fully escape the limitations of their specialized dentition. Lacking the dietary flexibility that allowed carnivorans to thrive, the last hyenodonts faded from the fossil record by the end of the Miocene.